Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how I made this flash lightning effect. This effect is based off the CW version of the flash. For this effect, I used Blender to model the lightning itself and After Effects to add some pretty cool post effects. Let's not waste any more time and get started. Delete the default cube and add in a plane. Go into edit mode and scale on either the X or Y axis by a factor of zero. I did this along the X axis. Merge intersecting vertices by hitting M and selecting merge by distance. Scale this line by a factor of five and hit control R to add some loop cuts. In this case, I added three. Tab out of edit mode and add a subdivision surface modifier. Change both the viewport and render values to five. Add a Displace modifier, which we'll rename to Displace Large. Make a new texture and name it Noise Large. In the Texture panel, change the type to Clouds, and back of the Displace modifier, change the direction from Normal to RGB to XYZ. Back in the Texture panel, change the color from Grayscale to Color. This will make our line become distorted in all directions, not just two. Change the size of the cloud's texture to something like 1.2. Add a new vertex group and tab into edit mode. Select all vertices with A and hit assign to assign this vertex group to these vertices. Select both end vertices and hit N to bring up the sidebar. Under the vertex weights tab, set this value from one to zero. For the next two concentric vertices, set the vertex weight value to 0.75. Leave the middle vertex's value at 1. Tab out of edit mode and select this vertex group in the displace modifier. This will smooth out our line near its ends. Add another subdivision surface modifier, setting both values to 2. Add another displace modifier with the same settings as the displace large modifier and we'll rename it to displace small. In the clouds texture, change the size to 0.25 and change the strength to 2. Add a skin modifier, go into edit mode, select all vertices with A and scale the skin modifier with control A by a factor of 0.05. Select the end vertices and use control A to scale these by a factor of 0. Do the same for the concentric vertices, but scale by a factor of 0.75, then tab out of edit mode. Change the name of the object to something like Lightning Large. Duplicate the Lightning object, scale it down in edit mode, and rename it Lightning Medium. Repeat this process for the Lightning Small object. Add a Bezier circle to the scene. This will act as our path for the lightning to follow. Add a curve modifier to our lightning bolts, then select the Bezier circle as the curve with the deform axis set to Y. In the Object Transform panel, add a driver to the Y position and set the value to hash frame slash 0.15. Apply this driver to the other lightning bolts. In the Delta Transform tab, set a keyframe on the first frame of the timeline for all of the lightning bolts. Go to the graph editor and hit N to bring up the modifiers panel. Now depending on which axis you initially create the lightning bolt on will determine how it's affected in the delta transform. In my case, transformations on the X axis will change the height position. The Y axis will change its position on the path 
and the z-axis will change its position relative to the center of the path created. Add a noise modifier to the x delta location with the scale set to 0.2 and the strength set to 2. Repeat this for the y and z delta locations, but change the strength to 20 for the y delta. Duplicate each lightning bolt and change the phase and offset values to randomize each lightning's look. Here, I'm making a simple scene with a plane and some columns I quickly modeled. This is not extremely important, I just wanted to make something the lightning can interact with. In the shading tab, I'll make a quick stone-like material to keep the effect from being flat. Then, I'll select the lightning bolt and give it an emission material. Set the strength to 100 and the saturation to 0.9. This keeps the lightning from being oversaturated. The hue of the lightning is up to personal preference. I set mine to orange, but you can do whatever floats your boat. This part is not important, but I'm heading over to the scene properties panel on the right and going down to the Color Management tab, changing the View Transform to Filmic Log, the Exposure to 2 and the Gamma to 0.5, and the Look to Medium High Contrast. Animate the camera to your liking. I'm just doing a dolly-esque shot that moves in over the course of the timeline. Go to the Compositing tab and add a file output node with two outputs for the Beauty Pass and Emission Pass. Over in the Node panel in the upper right corner, we'll change the file format to OpenEXR. Now it's time to render out our scene. Once that's done, we'll head on over to After Effects. Once we're in After Effects, we'll drop our Beauty Pass into a new composition. Drag and drop our Emission Pass into the comp, add a tint effect, then three glow effects with the radii set to 300, 100, and 30 respectively. Adjust the strength of these glows to something between 0.05 and 0.1. I use Video Copilot's Color Vibrance plugin to help match the lighting in the scene. Search for a fast box blur and drop it right after the tin effect and set the value to 0.1. Set the emission layer to screen. It's overexposed, so I added a levels effect and changed the clip to output white to on. I'm using this dust texture I found on Google Images to add some pretty cool lens effects. Drop the texture into the main comp, scale and adjust however needed, then pre-compose. Name it dust. Duplicate the lightning layer and rename it Camera Dust. On this layer, collapse all of the effects, delete the glows, and change the fast box blur value to 200. 
Add a set matte effect with a dust texture as the matte, then change the use for matte from alpha to luminance. A camera lens blur will really make this effect shine. If the dust layer is not noticeable, play around with the exposure to your liking. Duplicate the lightning layer again, delete the glows, and change the fast box blur's value to 10. Search for the optics compensation effect and drop it onto the layer. Set the value to about 85 and select Reverse Lens Distortion and Optimal Pixels. Play around with the brightness and gamma of the color vibrance effect to get your desired look. We'll then search for the transform effect and drop that onto our layer, setting the scale value to negative 100. This flips the layer on both the X and Y axis to mimic light passing through a camera lens. Add a radial fast blur to the layer and set the value to 80. I decided to mimic some chromatic aberration by adding Red Giant Universe's RGB separation effect and another fast box blur to soften the effect. Here I'm just playing around with some more distortion to simulate a kind of fisheye lens. Finally, I'll be using an adjustment layer with the blending mode set to color and messing around with the effects in Lumetri to color grade the effect. Another curves adjustment layer will help with the grade. If you want, just play with the effects and see what you get. That's it for today guys. If you like this video, please give it a like, and if you want to see me make more effects, feel free to leave a comment down below to let me know what you want to see. And since you're here, why not subscribe while you're at it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time around.